Ya. Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Carol Manny, and I'm here today with a few other members. This is kind of exciting. Um, Amy L. and Scott Cordonaway, uh, Ruth Rademacher, Bill and Isaac Verdez, um, Emily and William uh, Smezru, so we're all here to have a wonderful intergenerational service. Glad to see so many children. Uh, we as a congregation are about freedom, including loving inclusively, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the health and wholeness of the world. In living our mission, we are mindful of those who came before us. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people, they aided the European settlers who came down the Illinois River. We offer our respect to the Peoria people and who they were in the past and who they are today. For those of you who are new to the congregation, thank you for joining us today. Visiting a religious community, uh, whether in person or online, is a leap of faith in search of meaning and some connection. If you are online, please um, drop a little note, um, either on my email or to the office. And if you're in person, please stay for coffee hour, which I hope is gonna be outside and catch up with me. Okay, uh, we will have discussion group, hopefully at noon today. And I wanna also mention that we're making cards for um, Amy Pop today. So find that table in there and make sure you make a card because her, her going away event is next week. Uh, as we gather in person, uh, we are masking still, which is so disappointing, but it just is. Um, we continue to review everything and look, and, and right at the moment, it's, uh, the statistics are very, aren't, don't look very good in Peoria right now. So we're masking in the, inside the church. Once we get outside, of course, no need to, to mask. And also, if you can turn phones off, and Ruth is going to do the opening. Oh, the hymn. You're right, the hymn first. I'm sorry. See, I already started out there. Anybody want to stand up? You may. Uh,
Okay. We join together as one congregation. And this is a poem by Michelle Lagrave, and she's a UU minister in Houston, Texas. We gather together. We arrive as individuals, as couples, as families, as neighbors, as friends. We got here by walking, by biking, by riding, by driving, by connecting. We bring with us our joys and our sorrows, our laughter and our tears, our worries and our fears, our questions and our beliefs, our ethics and our values. Some of us arrived early this morning or joined us 10 minutes ago or encountered obstacles on their way or will arrive just in time for the sermon or will sign online later this week or even next month. We are sitting in pews, leaning on walkers or canes, stretching in the aisles, <coughs> settling in wheelchairs, and relaxing in rec recliners. We, members, friends, and visitors alike come from many paths and join together as one congregation. To lift up our highest ideals, we have gathered now. Let us worship. This is our chalice lighting for today, Shared Light, Shared Future, by Josh, Prudence, and Percival Roburn. We are all flames. When we gather hand in hand, our church, our community, our home. We inspire, we celebrate, we come together, sharing our light of hope for our shared future. Book. Yep. Our story for all ages, we're going to ask children or adults of any age to come join us up here or to be watching from your seats. I'm going to sit up here. So if I could get some children at least come up here, I'd love that. Come on out. Try it out, the big umbrella. All right, it's by Amy June Bates, co-written with Juniper Bates. By the front door. There is an umbrella. It is big. It is a big, friendly umbrella. It likes to help. It likes to spread its arms wide. It loves to give shelter. We might need this today. It loves to gather people in. It doesn't matter if you are tall. Does that look like typical people legs? 
<laughs> I'm not sure who that looks like. Maybe Big Bird. A big, big duck. I kind of thought the same thing. A duck? All right, we can't tell. Those legs are long. Ready, Isaac, for this one? Or Harry. Might be Bigfoot. <laughs> or plaid. You guys will like this one. It doesn't matter how many legs you have. Where's all of our animal lovers out there? It's a big umbrella, remember? Big. I don't know. It says some people worry that there won't be enough room under the big umbrella. Are you guys worried there won't be enough room? The umbrella looks like the top of a limo. A top of a limo? Like oh, because it's so long. But the amazing thing is there is. So there is always what? Enough room. It's a really good picture. It says, there is always room. So since some people are kind of far away, if you see something up front here and you want to share what you see in the pictures that maybe someone else that's back there can't see, if, if you see something, raise your hand here. Becca, what do you see? Family biking. An entire octopus. You guys see one? Go ahead. Someone from earlier, the duck? Yeah. Oh, a lot of legs. And I see the babies on the legs. What? A playground and big, hairy, big foot. A guy in a wheelchair holding a dog in a wheelchair with a dress. Okay, a man in a wheelchair holding a dog with a little wheelchair for his legs, and the dog is wearing a dress. <laughs> Two ballerinas. I see people eating ice cream. I see young people. I see older people. I see a bike that has two men, two babies, and a baby in front, and balloons. I see people running. Yeah. There's a lot in this umbrella, isn't there? Under the big umbrella. A princess swinging. Let's see. That was it. So it showed us there is always room. You do. Awesome. So as we read the story, I asked you to think about how this could be like our church. So in our church, is there always room for everyone? Yes. yes. It doesn't matter what you look like or what you believe, or if you had the duck feet or the hairy hairdo or the hairy body, or you have four legs, there's always room for you. Did you guys enjoy our story today? Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Wipey wide alien. It's okay. <laughs> No. Today for our um, offering, I read The River of Community by John Saxon. A religious community is like a river formed from the many streams of our lives that meet and merge and flow to the sea. As members and friends of this religious community, we share our time and energy, our creativity, imagination, and vision, our talents, skills, and gifts, and the streams of our individual lives to create a river that is both deep and broad, a river that is made of the many streams that sustain life and refresh the land. 
But the river of this community also depends on our shared financial support and makes real our shared values and vision. We will now receive an offering for the support of this religious community and its work in the world. You are invited to give generously and joyfully. You may also come up and, and uh, light a candle if you want. make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another. We do this because each person in this community has value. Each person's experience matters. We share our sorrows with one another today, knowing that sorrow comes into each person's life, knowing that together we offer comfort. We also share our joys with one another, knowing too that joy comes into all our lives knowing that together our voices can rise in a chorus of celebration. Not everything, joy or sorrow, can be shared openly in community. Some must be shared eye to eye or held in the heart. We further recognize that some do not have voices with which to speak the depth of their pain or the height of their celebration. We make space each week with the candle lighting, um, and the experience the life of every person. Every person matters together and our light shine on. Uh, today, uh, joy, for joy, I, I think that the uh, pride fest that we went to and we represented it yesterday was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was great. Um, that is something we'll continue to do. I met so many incredible people in just the time I was there. I think it was really great, really terrific. And um, 
this morning we I, we remember Merrill Foster and um, our sadness for his family. He was uh, he um, passed away on Tuesday, I think. He, he was a longtime member and a friend to to many. I I haven't picked up the joys and sorrows book because there's never anything in it. So I want to ask, just give you the opportunity, invite you to, if you just want to speak out your joy or sorrow, let's just take a minute. And if anybody wants to, you don't feel like you have to, but if you'd like to just speak up. Go ahead. Thank you, Katie. Anybody else with joy, a sorrow? What's on your heart this morning? Go ahead, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. I know you had a nice long talk with them a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so, any anything else? If not, we are going to have a reading from... This is when I wanted you to put on your little lights. Okay, so put your little lights on if you don't have them. Wait till Bill gets up in. Bill, come on up. Good morning. This is an eight and a half minute reading, a story from Janine Grossmeyer. And the name of the story is? A Lamp in Every Corner. Yes. Many years ago, in the land of Transylvania in a mountain valley watered by quick Russian streams, and shadowed by great forests of beech trees. There was a village of small wooden houses with dark shingled roofs. The people in the village were of the Unitarian religion, and they wanted a church of their own, a church set on a hillside. They decided, looking down upon the village as a mother looks down upon her sleeping child, So all the people of the village labored long and hard to build themselves a church. The stonemasons hammered sharp chisels to cut great blocks of gray stone. 
then set the stones into stout and sturdy walls. The glazers made tiny glass panes and fitted them neatly to the window with leaded lines. The foresters saw tall beech trees into enormous beams and laid the trusses for the ceiling, then covered the roof with close-fitting wooden shingles that wouldn't leak a drop of rain. The carpenters carved wood for the pair of wide opening doors, setting them on a strong peg so that the doors hung straight and square. A bell was brought from a faraway city, then hoisted by ropes with a heave and a hoe to the top of the tower. The weavers wove fine cloths for the altar table, cloths embroidered with flowers and edged with lace. The smiths hammered black iron into tall lampstands and hammered thin bronze into shining oil lamps. Finally, when the building of the church was done, the painting began. The painters mixed bright colors, royal red and shimmering gold and brilliant blue and everyone in the village, old, young, women, men, boys and girls came to decorate their church. They painted flowers, they painted trees, they painted designs around the windows and different designs around the doors. And at the end of the day, when it was finished, when their church was finally done, all the people of the village stood back to admire it and then to sing a song of happiness and praise. Their village had a church now, a church set on the hillside, looking down upon the village as a mother looks down upon her sleeping child. We will eat now, announced an elder, because everyone was hungry after their long day's work, and later tonight we will come back to pray. So the people of the village went down the hillside to their homes and their suppers, all except one little girl named Zora and her father. They stayed behind. They brought their own bread and cheese. They ate their food slowly, sitting on the grass on the hillside, admiring their new church with its strong stone walls and its tall tower and magnificent bell. After they had eaten, they went back inside, opening those carved wooden doors to go into the gloriously painted sanctuary inside. Oh, look, Father, Zora cried, running from picture to picture with her footsteps echoing off the stone walls. See how pretty the church is. She stopped in the center of the church and twirled slowly around. See how grand. Yes, it is, said her father, looking around and nodding with pride. Yes, it is. But Father, she said suddenly, we have not finished what do you mean? There are tall iron lampstands all along the walls, but there are no lamps. The church will be dark when the people come back. Ah, no, little one, said her father. The light of the church comes from its people. You shall see. He rang the bell to call the people to worship, then took his daughter by the hand and led her back outside. They waited on the grassy hillside next to their beautiful church of stone and gray. The sun had set behind the mountains. The night was coming soon, yet in the growing darkness, tiny points of light came from many directions and moved steadily up the hill. Each family is entrusted with a lamp, little one, her father explained. Each family lights its own way here. Where's our family's lamp? Your mother is carrying it. She will be here soon. The many lights moved closer, gathering into a moving stream, all headed the same way, growing larger and brighter all the time. Zora's mother arrived, bearing a burning oil lamp in her hands. The father lifted Zora so she could set the family's lamp high in its tall iron stand. All around the church, other families were doing the same. Soon the church was ablaze with light in every corner, for all the people of the village had gathered to pray and to sing. All through the worship service, Zora watched the lights flicker and glow. She watched her family's lamp most of all. When the service was over, her father lifted her high. She took the shining bronze lamp from the lampstand. Its curved sides were warm and smooth in her hands. 
Her mother carried the lamp home with a flame lighting the way. The lamp flame lit their house when they returned home. Zora washed her face and got ready for bed by the light of that flame. Mother, Zora began as she climbed into bed and lay down. Yes, little one, her mother asked, tucking the red wool blanket around Zora's shoulders. Father said the light of the church comes from its people. Yes, but also the people take their light from the church. Over on the table by the fireplace, the shiny bronze lamp was still burning, and we have that light every day. Yes, indeed, said her mother. And even when we are not in church, even when the lamp is not lit, we carry the light of truth in our minds and the flame of love in our hearts to show us the right way to be. That light, the light from truth and love, will never go out. Never, asked Zora. Never, said her mother. And this bronze lamp will last for many, many years. When you are grown, we will give you the bronze lamp. And when your children are grown, you will give the lamp to them. And all of you will carry it back and forth to church every time. But there's only one lamp, Zora said. So make another and let the light grow. And someday, tell your children to make more lamps too. And now, good night, her mother said and kissed Zora, once on this cheek, once on that cheek, and once on the forehead. Zora closed her eyes and drifted into dreams while her mother looked down upon her sleeping child. The years passed, Zora grew. The bronze lamp came into her care. She kept it polished and clean. And when the bell rang out across the valley to call the people to worship, she carried the lamp back and forth to the church on the hillside, the flame always lighting her way. When the time came, she made more lamps and gave them to her children, who made more lamps and gave them to their children. And so it went on through the years, even until today, and always the light of the truth and the flame of love from that Unitarian church on the hillside continued to grow and show them and us the way. Hello? Hello? Who? I, I feel like I have the princess chair here. I didn't mean to. Oh, maybe I did mean to do yeah. that. Um, so today for our sermon, we're going to include the kids and family. So come on up. It's about building our church and what it is that builds our church. If you want to take a second and come, anybody who wants to come on up. Isaac is in charge up here. Hi, William. Okay. And maybe we can turn Emily, turn just a little bit kind of sideways, because when I when we list these, we're going to ask them to take a block. Okay. All right, I'll get started with um, this morning. We're going to talk about what it takes to build a Unitarian Universalist church. What is a church? It is the building, or is it the people inside? Churches are made up of people. Churches can meet anywhere. There are churches that own big, fancy buildings in big cities, churches that have little old buildings way out of town, churches that rent auditoriums and elementary schools, churches that meet in storefronts and office parks, and even churches that meet in people's homes. So we're going to start with the blocks that are the foundation, and they're red. And the first one is freedom to choose. 
we the people should be able to choose what we believe about God. So, William, would you take this one and put it as the foundation? Oh, what a good start. Okay, another one of the foundation ones is hope through hard work. Ours is a theology of hope. The world will get better, and it will happen because of our hard work. There we go. Thank you. The next one is love. We are part of a greater love. We commit to creating more love in our lives and in the communities. Oh, the long, skinny building. Holy is everything. Everything is connected. The earth, the sky, people, the web of life, and the sacred can be found everywhere. Would someone like to do the next block? Elle, do you want to do that? Or Isaac, Ed. Elle. And then Isaac, you can do the next one, okay? Okay, Isaac, a piece of the truth. We believe that different people experience the sacred in a different way. Put it on the. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Go ahead. Bill's got the next level of blocks. These are important blocks. They bring our community to life, encourage friendships that last for years and years, and make our spiritual life together deep and rich and meaningful. These are some of the things that we share. Action projects, things like collecting food for people who are hungry, making blankets for babies in the hospitals, or cleaning up the river. Education. Churches are where we learn about our faith and also how to be a good person. Do the education. Inspiration. We go to church to have our hearts lifted up, to think about important things, and to think and to see things in a different way than the everyday world. Then we have music. Music is one of our favorite things to do together. Friends and family, the people we see at church become our church family, and we go to church to spend time with them. The building is getting bigger. Now we need the people to make the church really come alive. It takes a lot of people to make a church. Someone has to pay the bills for the electricity we use. Someone has to clean the floors. Someone has to write the sermons for Sunday mornings for each week. Someone has to prepare the lessons for the children. Someone has to print the programs that are handed out. Someone has to lead the choir. Someone has to practice singing. Someone has to play the piano. Everyone has some special gift to give the congregation. Okay. We're already ready here. Each of these blocks is an example of something special, a gift to our church. Let's add these small green blocks with the important qualities that people add to our community. Okay, the first one, compassion. This is what makes people want to visit people who are sick. Cooperation. This is what makes committees work well and helps people build with blocks in the church. Insight. There, 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 yeah, there you go. Okay, insight. This is what helps people write a sermon or teach a lesson. Courage. Who wants courage? <laughs> courage. This is what it takes to play piano or work on, special, on social justice. And last, 
Hard work. You all hard workers? Yeah. Hard work. This is what it takes to clean the floors and print the programs. Okay. That's it. Good job, guys. And now, are you going to take it? Yeah, this isn't in the script, but I want the I want these a picture of these builders. Amy Zucker Morgenstern. Never has it been more true than now, we extinguish this flame, but the sparks within us remain alight. From each of us in our supposed solitude, the signals buzz and hum, sparkling through space one to another, connecting us invisibly, but palpably. We are one, and from every window, our light shines. Thank 
No, we cannot do that. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our care for each other, our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues. Until we are together again, friends, be strong, be well, be true, be loving.